we have reached our final uh, in the four-part series of Basics of Drawing. We are at still life. So we are going to be setting up a still life for yourself to draw in your house. Um, it can be small. You'll see my drawing in the video is not very big, but that's not the point. The point is to set up two or more objects and use highlight shading and value in your drawing. So here's how you're going to get through it. You're going to pick your objects and make sure nothing is too distracting or hard to draw. Also pick a background that's non-distracting. You can see some of the examples um, ahead. Um, set up the still life, that's supposed to say life not like, anywhere uh, that won't be disturbed. Um, and then when it's set up, also take a photo of it just in case it does get disturbed because people have pets and siblings and, you know, things happen. Um, draw your lines lightly. Sketch out the entire drawing on your paper with thin lines and uh, use the composition uh, it should take up most of the paper. Mine, I, I left the sides open. I prefer that you did up the whole thing, but if you did a box, that's fine too. Um, there's lots of, and then add light and shading. And once you have an outline, you can fill in the rest of the drawing. And there are lots of, uh, there, I'm sorry, not, uh, there are some slides ahead that will give you some tips on how to draw objects. Um, I will also be hanging out in our Zoom if you have any questions too, but um, otherwise watch me draw and just try to pick up by watching me. So here is my, this is something that I actually drew about five, six years ago when I was teaching at Pioneer. Um, and I've loved keeping it with me because it's really simple. It's just a little pumpkin. It looks almost like garlic. But it's pumpkin and you start with your sketch and then you just slowly layer in uh, adding the highlights um, and the dark parts of the object that you're drawing. And then I just found this example online and I also really like this too. This walks you through steps if this helps you out more on how to uh, shade your object and make it look more 3D and realistic. Um, and you also have the option in this to use colored pencil and not drawing pencil. So if you want to try something, if you are a person that uh, has been drawing with pencil for a while, you feel pretty comfortable with it, um, try the colored pencil for this. Most people will use blending, but you can feel free to use other types of um, uh, pencil marking too. Remember, I'm going to flip back because I want to show you the different ones that you can use. So there's my chart that I drew, um, and there's hatching, cross hatching, stippling, scribbling, and blending. So blending is the most preferred. Uh, for people to do this because it's the most fun, but by all means, if you, it, it's not just the most fun, I guess I, I'm being objective there. Um, I, it's not the most fun. Um, it's just the most, uh, it's the easiest to get quick results with. The other ones take a little bit more practice, so people tend to like that one more. Um, so here's some examples of using uh, different types of mark making to draw a simple still life, something non-distracting. If you've got some cool shells in your house, oh, totally use them. Um, here's some more, just a simple flower in a vase. If you've got some fake flowers in your house, this is a great one for that. Um, and over here you see the hatching. It's not normal blending. There's more hatching going on here. And these are all just marks, marks that people have made. Our goal is to make it look like it's 3D by using some implied lines. So implied line means that the line is there, but you can't see it. And then I've got some color ones here for you too. You could do a small object in your house. You could do a, just a, a, you know, a towel hanging on something. These gotta be two items. So here's some flowers. Now with drying fruit, it's super fun, but it goes bad fast. So you've gotta actually take a picture of it because it could go bad. If you have fake fruit, that's awesome. I know some people have like random bowls of fake fruit in their house. I'm not one of those people because I have a three and a five year old and you know how that goes but <laughs> the thing I like about this one over here is that it's mostly realistic but the artist went in and kind of outlined with pens some of these parts here and that adds their personality their flair to it that's what I really like about it like this one here they're still outlining but the way that they're outlining it it's this all still looks 3d right so if you wanted to do this all in pen and ink go for it now is your chance 
if you want to get really technical and have like beautiful colors and stuff here look at there you go this is mine this is the one that I'm about to do in the video for you you'll see me complete this one in the video but I wanted to show you the final product here and this is in the presentation for you to see it is nothing special it is just practice I wanted to show you this uh, something that wasn't too put together because it's just practice so I did it all kinds of different ways I used different types of uh, varied lines here to get all kinds of different results and I use pencil on this and colored pencil and everything else so I'll talk a little bit more about it um, as we go over to the video but with this video uh, it's a little bit different because you're not going to really be drawing along with me you're going to be finding some objects in your home to draw so these are the objects that I found in my home um, you only need two. They could be completely different things. They could be small. They could be a glass. Uh, you know, as you start to draw, remember, is this item too, um, you know, is it going to be too difficult for your level of understanding? Like, have you drawn items before? If so, maybe you could handle drawing something that's got a little bit more detail to it. If not, why don't you just go get a glass and practice drawing a glass with pencil? Um, that would be a good start for you. Uh, so you've got to have two items in your still life. All right, so we're gonna go over to my drawing and I'm gonna talk you through it. All right, so we are gonna be looking at my still life. So I'm first going in and just doing the outline, the shapes. I'm sort of doing like a mix of sketching, contour. I'm adding the shapes on. Just getting the rough shapes, using my ruler a little bit when I need to. Let me get my colored pencils out. I'm gonna mix this. I'm gonna do colored pencil and pencil with this. So most of it's colored pencil. I'm gonna get the rough just the rough color in first, the general color that I want the pot to be. So I'm going to add that. I'm going to go in and just do a light background color on the floor for now. I actually drew this pretty fast. This the whole thing took me about 45 minutes, like I said. Um, so I could have gotten more detailed with the floor, I think. Um, but the background I did scribbles in and I picked a nice vibrant green that wasn't the same green as the plant was going to be. And I really scribbled it in on the other side, on the right side darker, because it was darker on that side of the room and it was lighter on the other. And then I went in with this dark green um, and just did the edges and did like a light wash of it in there. Not wash, but... Um, and then I actually went in with the pencil and not um, a colored pencil and did the croaky. That's what that's called. This little figure. And I use a tortillion quite a bit to blend everything, but you don't use a tortillion with a colored pencil. It just doesn't work like that. Colored pencils you have to be firm with and press down on if you want to get them to blend. You have to use a white colored pencil in order to blend. Um, so then I went back in and I added more blue to my vase and added white into the, the flat with the... Um, the plant which meant I had to darken everything up a little bit and then I went back in with white then I went in with uh, the opposite color on the color wheel of blue which is orange and the opposite of red is green and that's how I did the um, the shadows on the behind them so that was darker on the other side that's how I got that shadow effect on all those sides so if you are using colored pencil you can also do that to add a shadow, but that is my very rough uh, still life for my sketchbook, and I hope that yours is fun.